Hey, Stephanie. Turn the volume up. Yeah. On my laptop. Like. Oh, you're all the way up. No, on the keyboard, like on the thing up there. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, the wrong speaker's going there. There we go. Love technology yeah. when it does not work. Can you hear us? No. She's muted. No, Stephanie's muted. That's why you can't hear her. Oh. Hey, Stephanie, if you hit the space bar and talk, we'll be able to hear you. You're muted. I just want to get you in my earbuds. So I'm just ah. going to step out for a second and I'll be right back. No <laughs> Sorry. Problem. No problem. Okay, I'm good. Manny right. and Tina. Now we're back on. Oh, Manny and Tina are on? Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool, cool. I'm back. Hey. What do you want to give it a minute? We'll give it like one or two more minutes. Melissa, are you on uh, Facebook so you can see who's on? Yes, but I'm also posting real quick. Okay. Two more minutes. I don't think we need a blooper reel. No, we don't need bloopers. <laughs> no, we don't need that. Bloopers will be like, Rebecca, you have lipstick all over your teeth. <laughs> really cute. <laughs> no also, pressure, Melissa. No pressure. No. All right, so we got some people on Facebook. I don't see. You know, it's a lot of I can tell for sure. Okay. Oh, Brandon DuPont just liked your video, so Brandon is on. Ah. There you go. Cool. Yeah. All right, Rebecca, you ready to get rolling? As ready as I'll ever <laughs> be for this interrogation. Awesome. Awesome. All right, cool. So, uh, hey, for, first of all, thank you guys for joining today. Uh, this is part one of a three-part series where we're going to be talking about uh, the current real estate market and get to know a little bit more about uh, the people behind the scenes. So today, uh, I have the pleasure of interviewing Rebecca Correa, uh, the broker owner here at Realty One Group Executives. Um, if you've been on my other Zooms before, you know a little bit about me. I'm an agent in the office and... Uh, also a tech trainer, do mentoring, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so anyway, that's a little bit about me. So tell us a little bit about you, Rebecca. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you guys on Zoom and Facebook that are uh, checking this out. So I am the sole broker owner of Realty One Group Executives um, so far here in Smithfield. Um, and I am a mom of three beautiful, equally terrible children, Daniel, Ethan, and Lorenza. <laughs> 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 awesome. So because we're sort of a unique office and brokerage here, I thought we would start with a little bit of fun. So oh I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but I'm going to do three truths and a lie with Rebecca. So she's going to give us four things. One is going to be true. No. Three, three true. Three are true. And one is going to be false, right? So if you want to drop either a message in the chat box on Facebook Live or on Zoom, uh, we could do that. So go ahead. Let's let's know. Let's see. Let's hear your four. Okay. You guys comment um, or chat what you think is a lie. Um, I'm an investor outside of real estate. I got spanked by a nun as a child. I witnessed a bank. <laughs> I witnessed a bank robbery, or I met with a buyer at a halfway house. Wait, 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 wait. You got spanked by a nun <laughs> as a child? <laughs> All 
All right, so I got spanked as a child by a nun. Mm -hmm. You witnessed the bank robbery. Mm -hmm. You, what was the other one? Oh, you met with a buyer at a halfway house. Yep. And then what was the fourth one? I'm an investor outside of real estate. Investor outside of real estate. All right, so anybody want to guess which one is a lie? Oh, these should be fun. (laughs) I feel like they're not all obvious. They're not all. Mm-mm. People who know me can should be able okay. to guess. Stephanie, you're the only person I can see on camera, so I'm going to pick on you. Carlos was investor. Or investigator. Oh wait. And what did Carlos say? Investor or investigator? She thinks that that's a lie that I'm an investor outside of real estate. Okay. okay good guess. Bank robbery. Someone said. Bank robbery. A bank robbery is a lie. Another one investor. Okay. Manny's going with none. None. <laughs> <laughs> Very met with none. All right. All right. So tell. All right. So let's do the first one. Okay. Are you or are you not an investor in real estate? I am outside of real estate. I do have um, things that I invest in outside of the real estate industry. So that is the truth. Okay. All right. Sorry, Carla. <laughs> all right. So I think this one is probably true too. But I met with a buyer at a halfway house. That is the truth. Okay. When I first got involved in real estate, I was very eager, as I still am now, and I would meet with any buyer, seller, anywhere. So I had a buyer contact the office as a lead, and Mm -hmm. he wanted to buy a property, but I had to meet him at his office. Well, he didn't say what his office was. (laughs) So he said, call me when you get there. So I called him when I was in the parking lot. It was kind of a, a little, like, vibes were kind of going off that Mm -hmm. I was ignoring. He was a buyer, had to meet with him. Um, So I did. He came to my car door and escorted me into his office, which ended up being a halfway house. (laughs) We sat there for an hour and a half, and then he told me he was already under contract to buy a home. (laughs) So that's crazy. That was also a truth. Okay. Uh, What? Who else has got guesses out there? Um... Nobody. All right, cool. All right, so I'm just going to go down the list. Um, let's talk about getting spanked by a nun. I'm not sure if that's true or false. <laughs> so anyone who has attended private Catholic school uh-huh. knows that back in the day, they could hit you. So it's true. Uh, in first okay. grade, I was slapped by a nun in front of the entire class because I couldn't sit still. <laughs> <laughs> so it's true. I All was right. slapped by a nun. So that leaves the last one, which is? I never witnessed a bank robbery. <laughs> All Thank right. God. <laughs> awesome. 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 That was, that was pretty fun. <laughs> um, all right. So let's, let's talk about a little, little bit about your background and how you got here. Right. Okay. So just talk about that a little bit. So um, kind of generic. I was a stay-at-home mom. I, I had all different jobs when I was younger. I really could never find something or career path that I absolutely loved. Mm -hmm. So I had kids and I was a stay at home mom and my parents worked and they had really, really busy work schedules. So um, they wanted to find investment properties. So I took the time with Mm -hmm. my infant and toddlers Mm -hmm. and went and looked at houses for them. Okay. And I just loved it. So what, what part about real estate did you love? Did you love the, like the aesthetics of houses? Did you like, like looking at multiple houses? Did you like the numbers? For me, um, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that stuff. Um, for me, real estate is like a sport. It's Mm -hmm. like a a non-contact sport. It's competitive and I'm naturally very competitive. So I loved that you could meet with a client and they had an end goal and you had to get them there. Mm -hmm. Um, So I absolutely love that. Okay, cool. Yeah, I I meet agents that fall in love with the house hunting process. They like to look at all these different houses. So I just wanted to see if that was your your thing too. No, No, I I like to look at them, but no, that's not. That wasn't the main reason. Um, So how long have you been doing real estate or been in the real estate industry? 15 years. Wow. That's a long time. Hey, (laughs) Santa old. Well, you started when you were 15, so. Right. Yes, definitely. Um, All right, cool. So what, um, what's your favorite part about our industry? I would have to say, um, seeing the success of agents. 
seeing them start wherever mm -hmm. they're starting from and then grow. And I get to, to work alongside them and be a part of that. That is my favorite part. Okay. Do you have any examples of like someone you saw go from here to here? Yeah. 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 I mean, being in the business for the last 15 years, I've seen a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's so diverse, you know, you have agents coming from every different level, brand new agents all the way up to top producer to top producing team leader. And mm -hmm. I always say, if you can do everything just 1% better, mm -hmm. you're going to be leaps and bounds above where you were before. A lot of people think that you have to go like so hard and so all in and change everything and you burn out within, you know, weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, so I love to see just, you know, hey, let's tweak this or try this or have you tried that? Right. Um, and it's kind of more of a coaching position that I like to be in. So mm -hmm. any level and then they'll change something and then they come back to the office or they'll call or reach out and they'll be like, oh, my gosh, I did it. And, right. you know, it worked. And it's just awesome. I okay. love to see that. Yeah. So um, do you see any pattern like when people come into the industry? normally it's not their first job or their first profession. Mm -hmm. So do you see any like patterns where people that come from, let's say, I don't know, a sales background in a different area versus someone who comes in from a non-sales background, never sold anything in their life mm. into real estate. Do you see successes um, either yeah. way? Yeah. Yeah. For a lot of people, it's different. Mm -hmm. You know, for some people that come from sales, they might be more numbers oriented for someone who um, we see a lot of service people like, mm -hmm. you know, your nurses, um, yeah, police officers, wait staff, um, they have a much different outcome or goal or agenda than someone who is, let's say, mm -hmm. in pharmaceutical sales. So mm -hmm. they're all different. Okay. You know, they all have different um, goals, different reasons why they're getting into the business. So. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. The, yeah. The reason I ask that is because when you go through the 45 hours of real estate school, they never talk about how you're going to be running a business, right? And a big part of it is sales. So mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting to see that people are coming in from different areas, yeah. whether they succeed or fail. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, which is a good segue into the next question. So what's like the biggest, one of the biggest, like, um, fallacies about our industry that you'd mm -hmm. like to debunk? Like, Oh gosh. Yeah. I would have to say that we are used car salesmen that make quick and easy money. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my gosh, you're making this much commission. You didn't even do anything. Right. Right. <laughs> I, and I think that's even more of a conversation now that the market is so mm -hmm. hot, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of people think, oh, you're just going to throw a sign in the yard and, you know, it'll be sold in a day, mm -hmm. which technically, yeah, that's partially true, but there is a lot of the same work that you do for every sale versus, you yeah. know, whether it's a hot market or not. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, you know, if you kind of take a, a, a different market, maybe a buyer, um, a buyer's market, um, you're doing the same thing, but you're doing it like now we're doing it in a weekend instead mm -hmm. of two months. Right. So yeah, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think we do any less work. And I think um, for the most part, we work pretty hard. Yeah. I, I day and agree. night. <laughs> I agree. I agree. All right. So you've, you've been in the industry for a while. Mm -hmm. So you've seen a few cycles, you know, Yeah. I'm sure. Um, what led you to deciding you wanted to open your own brokerage? Good question. Um, so I got my license in 2006 when a lot of, a lot of agents, a lot of agents got in 03, 04. Mm -hmm. So I got in 06 when there was a lot of agents leaving the business. So for me, it was perfect timing um, because if I could thrive in a down market, you know, I'm going to be unmatched in any other market. So, yeah. um, so I got my license in 06. Um, I started with a local large franchise um, that had a lot of training and, and mentor programs back then mm -hmm. were not really um, as big and common as they are now. Right. So um, I started there, uh, learned as much as I could there for a little while, I had some transactions. Um, and again, I just, I kind of, I would ask a lot of questions to the people who I knew were doing a lot of business. Mm -hmm. um, so I started there, um, was there, like I said, for a little while. I did it part-time because I still, you know, my kids were still little at the time. Right. 
Um, so from there, I went over to um, another franchise, um, but instead I was with a team. Mm -hmm. um, and that team, I was the top producer, top producing agent um, originally. And then I made a tr transition within that same large producing team um, to help open their independent uh, brokerage. Mm -hmm. So I did that. Um, then I was with that team uh, for eight years. And that was pretty interesting because that showed me the operations. Mm -hmm. That showed me so many more aspects of the business as opposed to just production. You right. know, that's part of it. Um, so I helped to grow that team um, from the, I don't know, 80 deals a year to hundreds mm -hmm. annually. So that was, that was absolutely awesome. Um, from there, I left um, and I was the uh, regional vice president for um, another large franchise, but that was different. That was in a, um, a multiple office role mm -hmm. um, and I managed several of their offices. Um, from there, I just discovered that it was time. It was time for me to pursue my goal mm -hmm. um, of having a brokerage, a broker. Uh, so it's kind of different because I knew in seeing what I've seen over the last 15 years, I knew that we needed something different. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I'm, I take notes and I write all my crazy ideas down and, and I monitor them and I write goals down every single year. Um, so when I do that, I look at, you know, what needs to be different? I'm not a traditionalist. Mm -hmm. um, so what do we need? What needs to be brought into the state that's different and unique than any other brand? Um, so that led me, that led me here. So we opened um, officially last April, April 15th. So we were mm -hmm. one month into the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty fun. And that's the Realtor Saver Day too, April 15th. Yeah. Tax day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Be memorable open right. on tax day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, so there are, there are a few people, quite a few people that have their broker's license, right? Obviously mm -hmm. out there. So. I just wanted to clarify one thing. What's the difference between like a franchise slash broker owner, a broker and a broker of record? Oh, all right. That's a good question. Um, you're really making me think. <laughs> um, so I am a sole broker owner mm -hmm. of Realty One Group in Rhode Island. So essentially I own the brokerage. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also the broker. So I'm liable for all the agents here. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's all different, you know, you can have a satellite office and be a licensed broker, but not a broker owner. Okay. Um, you can have a partnership and be um, an owner, but not the broker. Right. So it comes down to liability, mm -hmm. you know, who owns what on paper and, mm -hmm. and who's liable. <laughs> yeah. So I've just took it all on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're liable for all of the agents, but you're also liable for the business, the business. and the franchise. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Understand. Understand. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about, let's talk about the market in general, right? So we're, what a weird year, right? I mean, a pandemic and things kind of shut down and then things exploded. Mm -hmm. We had a late spring market mm -hmm. last year. Um, what, you know, what do you think is affecting the market right now? I mean, we've got low inventory and, you know, a lot of buyers. So mm -hmm. what's your opinion on the current state of the market? <sighs> Um, I mean, it's, it's an interesting one because we mm -hmm. also have a new president in place. Mm -hmm. We have new policies. We have a pandemic that our generation, um, and obviously many others have never seen, have never witnessed mm -hmm. coupled with low inventory and, you know, interest rates and people who are out of jobs. Um, mm -hmm. so it's quite a unique mix. And I think that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of chatter mm -hmm. and a lot of different opinions from professionals, you know, everywhere. Right. Um, so I think it's, I think it's very interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this market being what it is right now, um, what, what advice or guidance are you giving, you know, to your agents on how mm -hmm. to, how to compete, you know, with, with, you know, great buyer, um, uh, proposals or trying to get someone a list that's like, Hey, I would love to list, but I don't know if I can find something to buy. Like, yeah. 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 So I won't give out all the secrets mm -hmm. that, that I coach the agents on, but, um, 
we all know that this market is not sustainable. You know, you mm -hmm. have the laws of economics. Right. Um, so I, I, I guess I would have to say um, work hard, take advantage of it, um, learn to work not only, you know, on the business, I mean, in the business, but on it. Mm -hmm. You know, we can rip our hair out of our head and we're, you know, showing houses constantly and putting in multiple, multiple offers and, you know, maybe listing a home and it's selling quickly. And, but don't forget to make sure that you're truly utilizing your systems, your technology, mm -hmm. um, your training, your reading, your learning about what's happening in the industry, you're talking to other producers. Um, don't just be so busy in the hustle and bustle that you forget to, to grow the business. You know, mm -hmm. we are all in a business. Um, so a lot of times we kind of get all caught up in the craziness and the chaos that we forget that we're all business owners. So mm -hmm. don't forget to to really make sure that you're focused on that. Take the time to, to train and expand your mind and learn more. Okay. So I hear that term a lot, work on your business and mm -hmm. also work in your business. Mm -hmm. Can you just clarify that a little yeah. bit? Yeah. So what you're, what you're kind of doing when you're working um, in it, mm -hmm. you're showing houses, you're putting in offers, that's in the business, you are in it. Mm -hmm. But working on it is taking a break from that and maybe putting your phone away for right. an hour a day. Um, training, what do you need to learn? What systems could you utilize um, for more effective delegation? Mm -hmm. There are some things that maybe you don't need to do. Maybe there's automation for your social media. Uh, maybe you need a coach to help you. Uh, maybe you need to time block. So focus on what you're doing mm -hmm. um, and how to sharpen your skills. Mm -hmm. um, but so it's, it's you, you can't do both at the same exact time. So right. you have to learn to step away and, you know, maybe it's classes, mm -hmm. um, maybe it's listening to a podcast or whatever that looks like. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the difference. Okay. That makes mm -hmm. sense. And I think what you just described would stop that cycle mm -hmm. that a lot of realtors go through. Right. Like, they work in their business and they're so busy that they're not working on their business right. and then yeah. they don't have any stuff, anything in their funnel. Yeah, that's exactly it. So yeah. the, especially with CRMs, mm -hmm. so many agents are not utilizing a CRM, which will stay in front of a customer or client for you. Right. So you have this cyclical up and down of income. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a great month, you're not doing anything with any leads or, and you're not prospecting at all. Mm -hmm. And then you have another month, everything closed and you have nothing. And you're like, oh my gosh, now I'm going to work on the business in the business. So right. you really have to watch that and make sure, but that's, that's a good point. Okay. So if, if I were a brand new agent or a newer agent entering this market right now, obviously it's kind of a weird market, but uh, what advice would you give that person? Mm. Don't forget why you started. Mm -hmm. It's not always pretty. Yeah. You know, it's, it's tough and it's cutthroat. Mm -hmm. Get ready for that. Mm -hmm. Don't take things personal. Yep. Put your head down, hustle and work mm -hmm. and never forget why you started. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I would add one more thing to that. I can add like 10 more, <laughs> but, but I me, just stopped there. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> me personally, I think one thing that's really important um, when you're a newer agent is to find a mentor, right? Mm -hmm. Or find, like you had mentioned earlier, find someone who's very successful mm -hmm that you can model and yeah. learn from, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Success leaves footprints mm -hmm. or footsteps. I don't know what that saying, what that saying yeah. is, but yeah. it's true. Find people who are where you want to be, mm -hmm. um, interview them, talk to them, pick their brain, you know, ask if you can ask questions when you're in the office, um, look at what they're doing, but we don't always have to reinvent it, especially as new agents. Look right. at what someone else is doing that you want to be like and mm -hmm. go get them. Okay. Awesome. So again, going back to the, the year we're in and the cycle we're in, um, what do you, what do you think the spring, summer, fall looks like for, for our industry? I didn't bring my crystal ball, <laughs> so I won't do any predictions, mm -hmm. um, because we're alive and be held against me in six months. Um, but that is definitely the million dollar question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Um, so the pandemic, um, has really changed a lot of business models, right? Not only our industry, our industry, but industries, you know, all across all yeah. across the board. But specific to real estate, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the good things that you know our, our models have shifted? So, what are the some of the good things that have come out of it? Okay. Um, 
we're utilizing technology. Mm -hmm. You know, we're utilizing things that we've been, well, I know myself um, within my years in the business from coaching agents, trying to talk about, you know, utilizing your tech, you know, mm -hmm. your video, you know, we're able to FaceTime a client and show them a property because maybe they don't want to go into it because of COVID. Right. Um, so we're utilizing so much more and we're finding ways to pivot our business mm -hmm. um, and to not let it stop us, but servicing clients <laughs> and the public in better ways. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, even my grand, my mother can FaceTime with her, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> I never thought that That's would happen. That's awesome. <laughs> I see so many, <clears throat> excuse me, people like open houses and they're like uh -huh. on their phone, on video, on FaceTime with a client. I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah, it is, it is pretty cool. And even agents doing video on social media, you know, that's the only way right now that we can reach people, mm -hmm. you know, for the most part. So I yeah. like that. Okay. What about, um, what about the negatives? Like anything that, you know, a model has changed and it's kind of a negative thing. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not one to really focus on mm -hmm. that stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the only negative, obviously, from all of this is the the lives that have been impacted. Yeah. You know, the sicknesses, um, obviously, the fatalities. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's so much. You know, I'm a mom, so homeschooling a middle schooler and a high schooler. Mm -hmm. whew, that's that's yeah. been a, that's that's a negative. Yeah. <laughs> The, I'm not a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that I, um, well, there were many things, but one thing I still don't really like is the closing process. I mean, it was so cool to sit down and have everybody oh, yeah. at the closing and yeah. smiling and happy and all of that stuff. And when we were doing like the drive-by closings, like just show up in the parking lot. I mean, that was kind of, kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was funny. Yeah. It was definitely funny. Um, how, what types of things do you think will stick around? I think technology is going to stick around for sure. Yeah. Hopefully uh, the hand washing. <laughs> I'm really hoping that we continue to wash our hands and sanitize our hands. Right, right. So hopefully that sticks around. Uh, no, I think the adoption of technology. Okay. All right. For everyone. I, I think so too. I mean, it's not, all, again, it's not only our industry. Yep. Hey, my mother is not only FaceTiming me, but she's ordering stuff on Amazon Prime. So, I mean, come on. <laughs> Good right? for her. I like her. <laughs> um. All right, so that's kind of like where we are with the industry. So let's talk a little bit about. Um, I'm gonna go to my next cheat sheet. Yeah, Realty okay. Realty One Group. Um, mm. You know, as a franchise, as a brokerage. Mm -hmm. So they're international. A lot of mm -hmm. people in Rhode Island don't. I don't think realize what Realty One Group, how big they are. Yeah. Um. Uh, they're international, which is amazing. So if you could we, just tell us a little bit more about we, Realty One Group. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. Um, so we are ranked the number one fastest growing real estate franchise in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, we currently have over 15,000 agents, over 300 offices. Um, and we now hopefully whoever from Realty One is watching doesn't quote me on this one. <laughs> we are global this year um, and going into different continents. I can't go into more detail about that, but mm -hmm. um, this is much bigger than you know, a small one office. Mm -hmm. And so where did they start? Where did Realty One Group start? So Vegas, mm -hmm. uh, headquartered in Laguna Niguel, California. Okay. And so how long have they been, been around and, and started franchising? So just 2005. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. not even that long. Okay. Yeah. So that's quick, quick growth. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's about when you started. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I didn't even put that together. Neither did I. Just now. <laughs> um, all right. So, you know, we're competing as agents for business out in the field, right? Mm -hmm. um, brokers are competing for good talent, right? For good agents. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you're doing and, you know, what type of agents are you attracting? Oh, well, I know for me, um, I'm and this is from not myself, but from other agents, they've enjoyed um, our brand. They mm -hmm. love what our brand has to offer. Um, they love our leadership team here, you being one of them, and <laughs> Melissa, uh, Vicki. Um, but there's there's just a different vibe here. There's different, uh, our office is completely different, like I said, what we offer. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it is I'm a coach. I am, as, as much as they want me to be, I am their coach and I'm here for them to help them grow their business. So, mm -hmm. um, and that's truly what my role is here to help them grow. Not for me to be 
you know, out on the road, you know, generating buyers and sellers, it's not what I'm looking to do. So mm -hmm. I am fully vested in their, uh, in their success here as their coach. Okay. Awesome. Um, so what, what's your biggest aha? Like you opened your business almost a year ago mm -hmm. during a pandemic and all of that good stuff yeah. that goes along with it. What was your like biggest aha moment, you know, over the past year? So I think something that I found to be remarkable and I guess beautiful um, in all of this, if there's something to be found, um, is that we miss the human interaction. Mm -hmm. um, we have access to all this technology and you can reach people everywhere. But what a lot of people are missing is the physicality, being able to greet someone with a hug mm -hmm. or, you know, you can't shake hands. Um, so we can't be with our family, you know, especially older family members. Um, mm -hmm. We can't really spend time and have parties and things with our friends. And, um, you know, granted, everyone can, you know, do what they want. But for the most part, that was, for me, that was the biggest thing that everyone is missing that. Right. So I think it's, it's beautiful to see. Mm -hmm. um, I guess if, if there is something that I would say, I, I just found that to be really interesting, you know, um, that the human interaction is really what, what is being missed. I never thought I would say that I miss real estate networking events because <laughs> they were like prom season at one point right. where there were so many to go to, but, um, yeah. I mean, at least for us extroverts anyway, yeah. that's, that's what I think was my biggest aha moment. I agree. The first couple of months of the pandemic, I was climbing the walls, like, was hard. literally like nowhere to go, nowhere to talk to, you know, just yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, all right. So you said you, you enjoy coaching um, agents in the office. Um, I've gotten comments from a lot of the agents that you're always available, right? So whether you're in the office or they need to send you a text or pick up the phone and call you or mm -hmm. send an email that you're very responsive. So yeah. having the growth you've had and, and being able to do that and touch all your agents, how do you anticipate that going forward as you grow? Are you mm -hmm. still going to be able to work and coach with your agents. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's what I, I kind of founded this office on. Mm -hmm. um, so it's scalability. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, maybe I'll just try to clone myself. I don't know. <laughs> you know, we'll see. But uh, it's scalability. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I intend to maintain it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you're uh, a business owner, you're a broker, you're a mom. How are you going to balance all of that? Mm -hmm. you know, with, with additional growth and still be available to your agents. And I know you just said clone, but yeah. And available to my kids. Yeah. yeah, and available to um, family, yeah. So effective delegation. Yeah. Um, our leadership team here is amazing. Um, they are, you know, truly it's, it's what makes a great team. Um, so, uh, you know, again, you being <laughs> one of them. Mm -hmm. um, so effective delegation. Mm -hmm. Um, and that will continue, you know, our leadership team will continue to grow as it is now. Um, and you know, great leaders put in the perfect places that they're naturally driven with their own passion. So, mm -hmm. um, absolutely scalability. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is, it's kind of an overused term, but I'm going to say it anyway, because oh, a lot of people are familiar with it. So, uh, what's your big why? Oh yeah. We hear this all the time. Mm -hmm. So like most parents, First and foremost, my big why is my kids. Mm -hmm. um, but aside from that, um, it's the agents. You know, just seeing their success. That's what truly just, I don't know. I, it's, it's just nothing. It's like nothing else like that. Mm -hmm. And when I was um, a producer, a top producer for a team, I kept coming back to say, how can I reach more people? How can I be impactful with more people, more so than just buyers and sellers? And I just kept coming back to, you know, if I can help and coach agents, then in turn, they're going to help their clients. Mm -hmm. So I can reach more people on a bigger scale. Um, so that's kind of, that's my big why. Okay. Yeah. To truly be impactful. Mm -hmm. So do you see, now you're talking about developing agents, right? Mm -hmm. Do you see agents naturally migrating to different areas of expertise? Like, let's say 
someone aspires to be a coach or someone aspires to be um, a leader or a team leader or something mm -hmm. like that. Do you, yep. do you see that and do you guide them that way or just let it happen? Well, it's, it's probably a mix of two. I mm -hmm. don't ever want to force someone into something that they don't want to do, but mm -hmm. pretty much when I meet with someone, um, you can tell, and I, no matter if I meet with someone and they want to be leadership or they don't, mm -hmm. I want to know what their goals are. Right. I want to know them on a much deeper level. Um, so for the most part, when I, when I do meet with them, they'll say it, um, or I'll ask, you know, have you ever wanted to be a teacher? Um, have you ever wanted to coach and help, you know, your peers? Um, so it's, it's kind of both of us, but mm -hmm. I really want to make sure it's something that they want to do. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, um, what keeps you, what keeps you up at night? Like there's a lot going on, right? between work, family, and all that good stuff. Yeah. What keeps you up at night? So if you know me, I'm asleep by 10 o'clock typically, <laughs> but um, I am one to wake up in the middle of the night. I actually have a notepad um, on my nightstand because I sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night with ideas and visions and goals. So I'm constantly just writing that stuff down. I'll wake up and think of an idea or mm -hmm. think of something that maybe I want to execute and I'll write it. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. That makes sense. I don't know. I guess I could try that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was constantly finding that I had all these ideas and they were in my head. It was like, oh my gosh, how do I, how do I fully execute when there's so many things mm -hmm. going off at once? So, all right, all right pen and paper, makes the old sense. fashioned way. <laughs> so it's like scribbled and really, really messy, but I know what it says. Hey, if it works, <laughs> it works. Um, all right. So you said early, somewhere early on, you, you had this idea that you would become a broker broker owner. Um, I think you told me you had a five-year plan it happened sooner, right? Yeah. All right. So, which is typically the case. Um, what advice would you give to someone who's now thinking about that same, you know, type of path? Yeah, I'm going to probably go back to one of my other answers. Um, learn more than just the buying and selling, mm -hmm. you know, learn every aspect, take it all in, learn what you can, mm -hmm. um, ask questions, read books, talk to people. Learn all aspects, you know, owning a brokerage is more than just selling houses. Mm -hmm. um, it's effective negotiation. It's leadership. Um, you know, you're leading people and you're affecting a lot of people's lives. So mm -hmm. learn everything, learn operations, learn systems, learn tech, learn it all, learn commercial, um, mm -hmm. every aspect of real estate. So it's more, um, it's more than just, I guess, a title. Right. You know, being a broker owner is to some a fancy title. Um, or I've heard a lot of people say, I want to be a broker so I can make more money. And I usually chuckle. Um, but mm -hmm. um, it's more than a title. You know, you're a leader and you're affecting the lives of many, many people. Be ready for that mm -hmm. um, and make sure that that's something that you're truly ready for. Okay. Mm -hmm. What you just said is pretty um, important. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing to be responsible for other people. And you shouldn't take that lightly at all right mm -hmm. i mean selling a house is a very it's, it's a lot of responsibility too right it's yeah. someone's biggest asset usually but mm -hmm. when you're responsible for the lives of several people mm -hmm. and their livelihood then that's yeah that's even more yeah you gotta take that seriously yeah. okay mm -hmm. all right so let's um let's shift gears just a little bit um so i think you would agree our jobs are pretty stressful nah. right right you guys agree this is not for the faint of heart. It's easy. <laughs> um, what types of things do you do to avoid getting burnt, you know, burnout? Because it's easy. You can get burnt out real easy. Yeah, yeah. that's, so that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think, and I, and I tell this to my kids and they're sick of me hearing it. When you do what you love, mm -hmm. it's a passion. It's, it's, it drives you by itself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I go to sleep early, but I wake up really early um, because I have a job to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you really have to figure out what that is. But when you have a passion, um, you know, I, I kind of, I don't, I don't really believe in the whole work-life thing, work-life balance. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, you find your passion and you go. Right. You figure out what that is. Um, a, one thing I tell my kids is, um, you know, everyone says, 
well, when I was little anyway, I don't know about you, when I was little, the joke was always, um, well, if you don't go to college, you're going to flip burgers at McDonald's. And mm -hmm. it was always this negative connotation. So I kind of spin it and I tell my kids, look, if you love making cheeseburgers, mm -hmm. go get a job at McDonald's and learn every facet of the business. Because one day you'll own several franchises of McDonald's. So mm -hmm. when it's a passion, um, you know, you learn to rest, you know, you never quit, um, right. but you rest. Um, so I guess, I don't know. I, I'm not quitting anytime soon. And I, and I don't rest too much because I have a lot of work to do ahead of me, but um, mm -hmm. just find your passion. And, and I think burnout is, is far and few between at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and if you hit and burn out, um, maybe look at why and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, for realtors or for agents in general, it's, um, if you're getting burnt out, it's usually because you're letting external things mm -hmm. have an effect on you. And right. like you said earlier, maybe you need to leverage something. Right. So Delegation. You, yeah. We don't like to let go. <laughs> and, and a lot of people that know me know that I have a hard time letting go. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you, when you see delegation in its natural, truest form, and you truly give someone something to do off of your plate that they're better at, faster at, mm -hmm. um, you know, your business goes up. Yeah. Like, let's talk about transaction coordination, right? Realtors Ooh. in general, generals, generally speaking, <laughs> are, are, Love not, paperwork. <laughs> are not that great at paperwork, right? We'd yeah. much rather be out and talking with clients and, and making right. deals happen versus, versus doing paperwork. So one area where agents could take advantage of is getting a transaction coordinator, right? And that would alleviate a little bit of stress and right. then they could concentrate on yeah. what they actually enjoy. Yeah. Which and goes back to the passion thing, right? Right. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Delegate, find people and go. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I heard you want to learn how to play golf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So have you ever played golf in your life other than mini golf? So, no, so I haven't. Um, so I tried to learn last summer. I had mm -hmm. someone who tried to teach me and um, I, I want to like swing it like a baseball bat. So I'm going to try. I, I truly want to try something different and learn. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I would love to learn how to go. Okay. Um, so are you learning to learn the game, learning to like, because you want to network, learning because yeah. it's a challenge. Because it's a challenge. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, no, no disrespect. I've always hated golf. Yeah. It's so, it's slow. You can't see the target. If I'm going to play, I'm going to play and I'm going to win. Uh -huh. um, so with golf, I can't see the hole. Like, I, it, I don't know. It's one of those things <laughs> where it's like, how, how do you win when you can't see the hole all the time? And it's so far. So uh -huh. it, because it's, it's the most challenging sport for me, mm -hmm. I want to do it. All right. So I've been playing golf pretty much my entire life. So I'm never playing with <laughs> you. <laughs> so I can tell you right now, and anyone else listening, if you're looking for instant gratification, mm -hmm. it's not happening. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. but if you practice enough, you'll definitely get there. All right. Sure. Well, we'll sure. see. For I don't sure. want to see anyone on the course this year. Uh -huh. Nope. I'm going to hide. <laughs> I'm going to wear like a hat and sunglasses so nobody knows it's me. You know what? I'll give you a little bit of advice on that. Just like when you go to a gym or go somewhere else mm -hmm. um, and you're worried about people watching you, they're not. They're so like in their own thing. That Until I hit them with some, like a golf yeah. ball or something. Yeah. yeah. Then they're going to be like, um. <laughs> um. All right, cool. Well, I wish you luck with that. I think you're going to do great. To I be continued. Yeah, to be continued. We'll see you on a golf course, golf course soon. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. This is always a good question to talk about, you know, your experiences. So if you could have lunch with someone that you admire, someone, as I, they don't have to be famous. They could be infamous either okay. way. Um, who would that be? And, and why would you want to do that? So that would be RBG or Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Notorious um, RBG. Notorious RBG. Um, not for anything political mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with with any political agenda um but for me she was a powerful woman i think she was like not even five feet tall she was a very powerful woman mm -hmm. that forged and changed history for women like myself mm -hmm. um and she also did it as a mom 
Um, and I found that to be amazing and beautiful. Um, and she did it with poise and this calm, confident demeanor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to have this hard exterior that we're just going to beat everybody and dominate everything. You know, we can, we can do things with poise. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I truly admire about her. So I would love to have lunch with her, but clearly that's not going to happen. <laughs> I, honestly, I think she's probably one of the most unsung heroes. Yeah in the u.s honestly because yeah. not a lot of people know much about her background i think you had mentioned a movie right about yeah her. there was a documentary that i watched mm -hmm. and that was truly eye-opening for me i'm mm -hmm. not a fan of history never mm -hmm. never really have been um for me that was eye-opening the things and, and the the paths she's forged for, like I said, women like myself, especially in a leadership role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think a lot of her work before she was on the Supreme Court is completely unknown, right? People don't yeah. even realize mm -hmm. all the things that all the yeah. things that she's done. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing that. Sure. Um, so, how about um, what's on your reading list? Like, are you a reader? Do you like to read? So, yes and no. Okay. Um. I, I only do like motivational books, sales books, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So um, yes, it takes a lot to hold my attention. Mm -hmm. um, the Art of the Deal by Donald Trump is my favorite, favorite book. Mm -hmm. I read it when I first got in real estate and I'm mm -hmm. happy that I did. Um, again, not a political plug. I just mm -hmm. found him amazing as, as a business person. Um, and he actually in that book, one of his quotes is, if you're going to think, think big. Mm -hmm. And that's actually one of our taglines at Realty One Group. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any other people that you enjoy their stuff? I'm reading the Ryan Sarhant book right now because it was like all the rage. Mm -hmm. So far, that's really good. Okay. Yeah. I would recommend that for new agents too. Mm -hmm. It's a good book. Are there any, um, I don't know, if, are you a podcast person? Do you listen to podcasts? I do. I'm mm -hmm. a Gary V girl. Gary V. I love Gary V. <laughs> Um, Barbara Cochran, Tony Robbins. Uh -huh. um, oh gosh, there's so, so many. I make my kids listen to them too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they can't, well, not only one can drive. So the other two are stuck in my car. Uh, so right. maybe one day they'll, they'll I appreciate it. it. I got it. Um, this isn't on the list. So just a little bit of a surprise. Okay. Um, do you have, do you have like a morning routine that you get yourself into before you start your day because a lot of a lot of people prescribe to that like mm. or a lot of people offer that as advice like hey have a good routine for your day right that's what um, you have for success i mean i think you have to do what works for you mm -hmm. and it's a it, it's great that there are so many different ideas out there mm -hmm. i am not a very very regimented structured time block person mm -hmm. uh for the most part um I'm up at six and I hit the ground running okay. in, in every sense of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I really don't. I'll sleep in sometimes on Sunday morning sometimes, right. um, but I'm not one to be super structured and organized, but um, yeah, my feet hit the ground at 6 a.m. and usually we go. You're off and running. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's a Starbucks. It's all that. It's all that. I'm like a ball of energy. Uh, yeah. Isn't that the breakfast of champions, right? Just yeah. Coffee. Coffee's for coffee. closers, man. <laughs> there you go. Um, all right. So what's on your bucket list? Like what's something you really, really, really want to do? So I don't have a bucket list, full disclosure. Okay. But I really want to learn how to golf. Yeah. Yeah. Like I really want to like really be good at it. Okay. <laughs> But other than that, I really don't have a bucket list. All right. Um, not everybody has one. Thank God. For sure. Um, <laughs> all right. So I don't have any other questions for you. Is there anything right. else you want to share with, with the audience? Um, I, I can open so. up, maybe I'll open up this chat room right here. Yeah. Any questions on the chat? Facebook Live? Oh, Stephanie said she loves golf. Go for it. You do. <laughs> You're good at it. There you go. We'll see. Yeah. I'm not terrible. Good. <laughs> ah. <laughs> That's a great answer. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Who's on Facebook? I can't see from here. 
Uh, oh, are you doing IG live too? Yeah. Um, no, no questions right now. Oh, Justin's got a comment for you. Nice. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. Cool. Okay. Well, if uh, we don't have any questions in the audience, I would just want to thank Rebecca for spending the time today with me. Thank you. Thank and, you. And um, so next month we're going to do. Um, we're going to do an interview with the title company. We're going to talk about all of the things around titles and talk about the market and you know what's what to anticipate from a title attorney's perspective or a title company's perspective. And then uh, short sales, yeah, short sales, foreclosure, forbearance, all that good stuff or bad stuff. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's all we got. Awesome. Well, thank right. you. Thanks thank you Rebecca. guys. Here means it's such a good movie.